Hi, my name is Judy Curtin and I'm an author. And um, most of my books are set in the present day and they're quite realistic and that's what I like to write in general and that's what I like to read. But the one exception I will make is for time travel because I think time travel is such a great concept. I'd love myself to go back and see what it was like to play with my babies when they were tiny. I'd like to be a teenager again, not, not for a long time, but maybe just for a day. And when I speak to my mum, I'd love to, I get ideas when she tells me stories of her childhood. I think I'd love to be there, I'd love to play with her, to be that age. So of course we can't do that, but in books I can do anything I like. So a few years ago I came up with two characters called Molly and Beth, and I'm going to let them time travel. And I take them back to the 1980s, and that's the time Molly and Beth are 12 at the time, and in the 1980s their mothers and fathers would also have been young teenagers. And I thought, would it be fun to get them to meet? And then to make it even a little bit more interesting, I said that Beth's mom died when Beth was a tiny baby, so she's never had a chance to get to know her mom. And if she could go back to the 1980s, would it be the right thing for those two to meet up? So they were the ideas I was playing with. And that book, uh, I loved writing it. Uh, it's called Time After Time. And the way these things happen with me, uh, I seem to have got a bit carried away. And I wrote a sequel called stand by me and then I went on and wrote you've got a friend but for now I'm just going to read you a page or two from the first Molly and Beth book called time after time and I need my glasses to do that now in this story it is um, Molly who is telling the story Beth has been my best friend forever you know what it's like when you have a very best friend it's like she's the only one in the whole world who really, really gets you. You know what she's thinking. And she knows what you're thinking, even when no one has said a single word. It's like she's a part of you, the better part, the part that doesn't get embarrassed over stupid stuff. You want to spend all your time with your best friend. You want to have sleepovers every Saturday night. You wish she was always around, ready to listen to your secrets and laugh to your jokes, even when they're not the tiniest bit funny. You wish your best friend could be your sister, so she could live in your house and you could be together every moment of every day. My advice, be careful what you wish for. My dad left four years ago when I was eight. One minute we were a normal, boring family and the next minute everything changed. The day after his 42nd birthday, dad turned into a hippie and set off to Africa to find himself. Mum went totally crazy when dad left. She stayed in bed for a whole week, crying and eating crisps. When I got home from school, there was never anything to eat, even though the whole house smelled like there had been an explosion in a crisp factory. It wasn't funny. I wanted to help Mum, but I was only a kid. What was I supposed to do? And anyway, I was sad too. Mum was so busy feeling sorry for herself, she often forgot that I was missing Dad too. We both lost summer. Sometimes I sat by Mum's bed and held her hand, but it didn't make any difference. A pile of empty crisp bags and gross soggy tissues just spread further and further across the floor while I got more and more scared. They make movies about the kind of stuff that was happening in our house. Sad black and white movies that don't usually have happy endings. So that's the opening pages of Time After Time. I hope you like it and I'm sure you go to your local library and um, source a copy of that and if you'd like to know any more about that. So thank you very much for listening. Bye.